All right, welcome to the third video of the IPS Mastermind class, File Prep for Quality Printing. I'm Michael Howard, the founder and CEO of Musea. And this episode is going to be 95% about sharpening. So we're going to talk about sharpening in Lightroom, and we're going to talk about sharpening in Photoshop. And then after all of that, we are going to uh, just briefly look at saving and exporting files uh, correctly and what settings you can use um, and then your file be ready for print. So we're going to start in Lightroom and we're going to look at sharpening uh, in Lightroom. So uh, here I've got a um, image pulled up that we're going to look at with sharpening and so you will go to your develop tab and on the right you will scroll down uh, and you will go to the detail section. And then under that is uh, your sharpening options. So um, there are four options for sharpening, uh, four sliders. Uh, they translate a little bit from Lightroom also to Photoshop. So they're kind of, they work similar. Um, so before let's get into sliders, we're going to talk about uh, a couple things about sharpening just super fast. Um, sharpening, basically what you're doing is you're just increasing the contrast on the edges uh, within your file. So anywhere there's an edge, uh, a shift in tone, that's what you're increasing the contrast to create uh, a crisper image. One of the things you want to avoid is over sharpening. Uh, you don't want to go too much with sharpening and then your edges are going to get uh, pixelated, you're going to get artifacts, and then the edges are going to look rough. They're not going to look smooth, uh, and then overall it just makes the image not look great. So you don't want to do too much, um, and so you need to play a little bit with settings that work for you. This is a lot about personal taste and your brand, what cameras you're using, and just the overall look you like. Um, there's not a there's not there's not a black and white rule on what's like too much or too little. Uh, but do know that you can you can go too much where you just the edges pop too much, uh, and that is often considered um, unfavorable. But uh, it's ultimately up to you what you like and what your clients like. Uh, keep in mind that if you're shooting on a modern uh, DSLR. Uh, their lenses are crazy sharp, and so a lot of images, if you nailed your focus, they don't need a ton of sharpening. You can just do it very minimal, and it's going to look great. So the other thing you need to consider is, uh, since we're talking about printing and prepping files for printing, you need to look at what uh, medium you're going to be printing onto. Acrylics, metal prints, those are uh, will probably show what you how you sharpened a little bit more clearly. Uh, things that have more texture, like a canvas, uh, something that has got hand painted on top of the image, um, maybe like a really textured cotton rag fine art paper, or something like that we would print on here at Musea. Um, those are a little bit softer, so you can maybe sharpen just a tiny bit more for print, um, so it would show up a little bit more. Uh, and then other medium, like I said, metal or acrylic, something like that, you may not want to sharpen quite as much because it's already going to have a lot of contrast and it's going to pop. Uh, already a little bit more. So uh, the best thing to do is maybe do some play with your sharpening settings, maybe get some small tests done on the material that uh, you're going to offer your clients so you can really fine tune uh, your sharpening settings and really where you like it uh, and what reflects well within the medium that you're printing onto. All right, so let's get into these sliders here in Lightroom. So there's four sliders. The first one is the amount. It's literally just the amount of sharpening that's going to be applied. And it's applied to the whole image. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's light, dark, anything like that. It's going to apply it to the whole image. So typically uh, what you want to do is set it around 50. Um, and we're going to go in here and look at this. Um, to zoom in in Lightroom, just a quick tip, you can do the Command key plus the plus and equal sign, and that will zoom in. Zoom out, you hit the Command key and the minus sign right next to it. So we're going to zoom in here real close because we're going to look at her face um, and look at all these. So I'm going to zero out all these the bottom three sliders. So uh, a mount slider, you've got um, 
you really want to get it about 50 or maybe lower. You don't really want to push it up to this 100 range because uh, you'll eventually get too much. Uh, let me see. For me, to, I need to add some radius so you can actually start to see what it does. So uh, all these are in a relationship to one another. So uh, if you move one really far over to the right and then you have a lot of the other ones way over to the left, it won't be as strong versus moving two of them all the way to the right. So we change one, it affects the other three. So you have to uh, really play with them in relationship and see really what works for you. It helps when you know what each slider does, which we'll go through so you can better understand where you need to select it at. So the amount is just uh, the greater overall amount. Um, you don't need to just blast this all the way to the right. Normally um, around 50 or so, uh, you're doing okay. Keep in mind that as you move the amount to the right, you're going to increase the noise or the artifacts or the pixelization within the image. Um, you can see here kind of on the background where it's supposed to be smooth, you start to see uh, little bitty dots or squares. Those are the pixels starting to pop up or artifacts. You also need to pay attention to the shadow areas because when things are going to start uh, having artifacts show up, the shadow areas is one of the areas that that happens first. So. Um, so like I said, probably around 50-ish is a great starting point on something like this for your sharpening uh, amount slider. And then the radius is the, the on the edge, uh, which is where we're sharpening because that's where the contrast is going to happen. Uh, it's how wide do you want that edge to be uh, sharpened and where you want the contrast to be. So if you're looking at one, it's like about one pixel, two, two pixels, three, three pixels. So how wide of an edge do you want that? Um, obviously, if you go uh, more to the right, you're going to get a wider edge. Um, I'll kind of bring this over so you can see it a little bit um, versus uh, all the way to the left. It's a little softer. Um, so usually you want about 0.5, 1.5 really is kind of a max. You, you really don't need to go over that typically. So let's just stick this around 1, um, 1.1 somewhere in there is a good number. Um, but that's how wide it is on the edge. So your detail, um, it controls the amount of sharpening on the edges, the details, and basically it's the large edges uh, versus the small edges. So the more uh, you move the slider to the right, it will include more and more of the small edges, which means just more sharpening overall will happen in the image. Uh, the more you keep it to the left, the lower the detail number is, it will only focus on the largest edges within the, the image, the file. So you can see as I move it to the right, um, you have parts that get really pixelated. And as I move it to the left, uh, it softens down, especially like around her cheek and nose area. You can look at that. Um, so again, this is another one that, you know, around 50 or so is a good kind of way to, where to park it. We'll put it here around 40 for this. Um, and then the next slider is masking. Uh, and what this does is it flattens out a lot of the smooth areas uh, where there's not edges. It kind of lowers that and smooths that and gets rid of some of the artifacts. So it kind of masks out those areas. So this is great uh, and it works in relation with all the three sliders you have above it. Um, and so you'll apply this last. Uh, and so as I go to the right, you'll notice that the background over here on the left part of the picture, uh, gets a little smoother, okay? Uh, there's parts, I'll go all the way back, see how it's pixelated? Smoother. So what will happen with her skin, I'll go take it all the way down again, uh, where her skin is not near an edge, and it's just kind of out there, chin, for example, things like that, those, the pores and stuff will soften back down. Uh, you can kind of see it there. So um, that's what your masking does. So you just kind of want to play with it, figure out what's great for you uh, in each image. Um, this one, you know, let's you know, let's go around like 60 or something that works. Um, and that's really all the sharpening you're going to be doing built in directly into Lightroom. Uh, and for some people, that's enough. Uh, it's kind of a good overall sharpening. It kind of sharpens the uh, image overall. And uh, just is very basic. It's similar to maybe like an unsharp mask type of look uh, that you would get in Photoshop. Okay. 
So next we're gonna go into Photoshop and look at some options you have in there, which uh, give you a lot more control and there's a lot more in-depth things. So one of the strategies you could use is just editing your color, uh, contrast, and your basic cropping in Lightroom, exporting that, and then uh, opening the file back up in Photoshop do some really fine tuning on your sharpening, okay? So let's go into, um, let's go into Photoshop. I'm gonna reset this photo because I was working on it earlier and we will do some sharpening on this, okay? So here's our overall image. Um, what I'm gonna do is zoom in a little bit. And uh, in general, uh, there's a lot of ways you can sharpen in Photoshop. So most common, you can go to Filter, Sharpen, and you'll see there's these different settings. Shake Reduction, Sharpen, Sharpen Edges, Sharpen More, Smart Sharpen, and Unsharp Mask. So for this, we're gonna end up doing uh, Smart Sharpen, but before you apply it, what you wanna do is actually you wanna come down here and you wanna create um, a duplicate layer and we're gonna name this uh, Sharpen, okay? And there'll be a reason for why we're doing this on a separate layer later. Um, you just, I just controlled clicked, right clicked to get this menu to create a, a duplicate layer. So we're gonna sit on this top layer. We're gonna go to Filter, and we are gonna go to Smart Sharpen and look at all the features that are in there. So let me pull this preview window uh, over so we can see her face really good. Um, and these are uh, a very similar slider options that we had in Lightroom, okay? So uh, we're gonna bring the radius down, but your amount again is just your overall amount of sharpening that you're gonna apply to the image. Um, you don't wanna go, again, too crazy with it. You don't wanna go too weak with it. Um, and just uh, controls uh, the overall effect. Um, so I wanna zoom in a little bit better so we can get a better idea where we're at, okay? So let's let's just kinda set this in the middle. Um, you know, you could kinda go 200, let's go like two, 250, okay? Yeah, we'll go in there. All right, so radius, again, that's, uh, how much on the edges, how wide you want that to increase the contrast or, or make uh, a change. So if you push it too much, you're gonna get crazy stuff like this, you know? So you don't wanna watch, so you really, really want to typically keep your radius, radius pretty low. You don't wanna go too crazy with it. Uh, or you'll get things like this, which have this weird HDR look, which are just not flattering. It's, it's really not great. Um, so usually if you're kind of in that one, uh, that 1.4, 1.5, even less than one sometimes range, you're good, okay? Um, so reduce noise, uh, it helps, again, reduce the artifacts and things like that that you might find. I'm gonna zoom in a little closer here to this eye. Um, and so as you go to the right, it'll kind of soften. You kind of notice that. It gets kind of blurry again and it takes some of those artifacts out. So this is another one you don't want to go too crazy with it. A lot of times even you can leave it at zero. You don't even have to add very much with it. Um, so on this example, I will actually probably keep it at zero, but that's what it does. It'll smooth out um, some of the artifacts if, if you got too aggressive with it on the first two sliders. Uh, and then remove, um, there's three options, you have Gaussian Blur, Lens Blur, and Motion Blur. Lens Blur and Motion Blur, those are really cool if you had some camera shake or camera movement when you were taking the photo. If you had a low shutter speed or something, for example, and you needed to, you thought it was a little too blurry and you wanted to save some of that, because um, you're shooting in, you know, pushing the edge of a, shooting in a slightly dark setting, uh, dark, room or something like that. So in those in that situation, with this camera movement, you can use lens blur or motion blur to help reduce that. Um, but if you have uh, just a standard image where you had plenty of light and you don't have any camera movement, then you'll wanna set this to Gaussian blur to remove that, okay? Um, 
next below that, you're gonna look at the shadows and highlights section, which is really cool stuff. So uh, what this does is pretty much probably what you think it does is it gives you control over sharpening in the shadow areas uh, and in the highlight areas, which is pretty sweet. So you get uh, a lot more control over your image overall than you do in Lightroom. Uh, so uh, an example of that would be if you have, uh, maybe you're doing like a black and white image and it's a portrait of somebody, but the background is really dark, but they're uh, in the light and it's really, uh, they're the brightest, they're more in the highlight. Then it allows you to maybe keep the shadow area soft and not sharpen it, and but uh, their face and their body, you can sharpen it up a little bit uh, with the highlights because they're in the brightest part of the image. So it allows you to kind of separate out what you're sharpening and what you're not sharpening or do it at different levels or different amounts depending on what you need. So it's a great way to really fine tune your overall look. Um, so some of these sliders uh, we have here, are fade amount, tonal width, and radius. Um, so fade amount is, um, controls how much sharpening is applied to the shadows or highlights. So it's just how much sharpening do you wanna have in the uh, shadows. So I'm gonna pull this image kinda over into a darker area of her hair. So if you keep it low, you can see it's gonna not have as much. Um, or to the right, it's gonna affect it, so. I have a low radius here, so it's not gonna show up a ton. But you can play with it. And you really just wanna find out what is more favorable for you. So. So actually what happens with this slider, it's a little bit backwards. So, when you have zero on your fade amount, it is applying everything that's uh, up here. Um, it allows that to come through with your setting. Uh, if you bring it to the right, then it's actually, it's almost like an opacity layer. It's kind of blocking the amount of sharpening that was done up top. So you can see it's a little bit softer here. If I go to zero, it sharpens it up. If I go to 100, it softens it down. But that's only happening in the darker areas. So if you want her hair a little sharper, something you can um, you can play with that. So uh, and then let's look at highlight. So let's see, let's drag this back maybe over by her eye. Um, so it's the same thing. So your tonal width again, you really want to keep it kind of in the middle. What this is affects is how much of the highlights or how uh, little of the highlights. Um, you know, if you move one way, you get more white uh, and less of the other highlight tones. If you move the other way, you're gonna get um, more of the different variations of the highlight tones that can be sharpened. So uh, you can play with it, but typically you kinda wanna keep it in the middle. You don't wanna go sliding it around um, too much. So um, the shadow, oh, I was gonna say with the shadows, remember what I brought up earlier about your artifacts and things will show up in the shadows more than the highlights. Uh, this Smart Sharpen allows you to kind of play with that and smooth that out more, because uh, that's where you'll have issues is in the shadows. So this is a great way to try to find artifacts and then to smooth it out. So you'll maybe sharpen a little less in the shadows um, than you would in the highlights where you can kind of be a little more aggressive because the artifacts won't show up quite as fast. So. Um, that uh, is just a little quick reminder. Um, but again, so this you wanna play with. So zero is gonna allow all that sharpening that was up here to come through. And then you can add uh, even more um, on top of it. So if I push this to you know, 71, 66, it's gonna have more, or if I bring it down, um, it's, it's probably not gonna do quite as much and you can you know play with these and just kind of find out what's what's best for you. So let's let's do this. We'll be a little more aggressive with this um, in the highlight section. 
uh, and kind of really sharpen that up and, and see what that looks like. So um, that's really it, honestly. So you, you'll kind of play with that, but uh, it gives you some more control. And then here's what we do with uh, this other layer. So just as a quick, uh, to show you a little before and after. So this is with the sharpening applied. If I uh, click this little eyeball next to this layer down here in the bottom right, uh, it'll take the sharpening away. So this is what the file did look like before. And then if I add it back, that's I added the sharpening there. So one of the things you can, can do with having it on a separate layer is you can play with the opacity. So you can be a little more aggressive with your sharpening in Photoshop if you want. And then you can use this to fine tune how much is in there. So if I bring it down to zero, you can see it just looks like this original file because I'm making this layer basically invisible because it's zero opacity. If I bring it at 100, it brings all that sharpening uh, back to the image. So you can really fine tune it. And so if you know if you don't, if you can be aggressive with your settings, and then you can come in here and just really tweak it a little bit more to get it exactly where you want it. So let's say like 78%, I like that. So yeah, so that's it for sharpening. Uh, there are way, um, way really complicated ways to sharpen in Photoshop. So one of the other ways you can do it is through high pass sharpening, um, selective sharpening. So in the PDF with uh, this segment that I gave you for the class, there's a link in there that walks you through that type of sharpening. If you want to do more selective sharpening, uh, it's really complicated, um, but if you're into that kind of thing, if you're already doing high pass filters for beauty retouching and things like that, you can kind of throw the sharpening in there as well. Um, and it's a great way to give you even more control uh, of it, but I just provided the link to it. It's broken down really well in that article, and that'll just give you another way uh, to sharpen if you want. Uh, if you don't like the results, or you want to have more control even, or just a different look than what the Smart Sharpen filter will do in Photoshop. Um, but for me, I would definitely recommend just editing color in Lightroom, and then doing sharpening in Photoshop, because uh, it just gives you way more control than Lightroom does. It's just got those sliders that you can't really fine tune. All right, so now we're going to look at saving files or exporting files from Photoshop and Lightroom. So we're going to stay in Photoshop since that's where we're at now. So you want to make sure that you have a flattened image um, because at this point you're ready to print. So we've done everything that we've taught up to this point has prepped you for this. So the file is prepped. Now you just need to save it so that you can upload it to your print lab. Um, so you make sure you have a flattened file, and then you'll go in Photoshop, you go File, and then Save, um, or I'm sorry, Save As. Uh, you don't necessarily want to do what I just did because uh, you just saved over your master file. In that case, you could use your history and go back, but typically you're going to go File, Save As, um, and then you'd you know, type in uh, Final, sharpened or something like that. Uh, however you want to name your files, but you know that it's done. Um, you could be like, you know, ready for print. You could make a little abbreviation, RFP. A lot of things you could do just so it's not your master file. Instead it's a JPEG. Um, you could do a TIFF if your lab accepts TIFFs. Um, it's going to make the file way bigger. Um, and if your master file is a TIFF or something like that, that's totally fine. Um, and then you're saving it down to JPEG just this one time for printing. Um, you can embed your color profile here. If you need to change, again, remember, if you need to change your color profile um, for printing at the end, if your printer accepts one type of color, prof color profile or another, let's say you've been editing in Adobe RGB, um, you can go down to edit and assign profile, and then you can change your uh, profile here to Adobe RGB before you save. Um, so anyway, file save as, um, we'll name this something like RFP. I've got my sRGB because my lab takes sRGB. Um, and then you're gonna get a little quality um, JPEG option box. So you don't need to set it at 12 because uh, the human eye really can't see the difference. So in this example, you're at 6.8 at the 12 quality. So if we go down to 10 
uh, you'll have a reduced file size. So now it's 3.3. Um, so it's almost not quite a third um, of the size, but it's more than half. It's about 40%. So it uploads faster, and you'll never know the quality difference in print. Uh, you won't be able to tell. So it just saves you a little bit of space. And then you'd save it. So that's how you would save in Photoshop. Lightroom, um, let's look at this. So you would go File, Export, and then you're going to set your location up here in this first one. Uh, you can rename it or just keep it the same if you want. Um, Image sizing we talked about earlier in an earlier video related to cropping. Uh, if you forgot that, go back and revisit that. Um, but you'll make your selections on there that you need to do for the print. Um, and you will, um, you don't really need to worry about sharpening here because we already did that. Um, here is your file settings. So we need to make sure we have this open. So file settings is right above image setting. So you have this quality slider. It's the same thing as that kind of 12, 10 thing you saw in Photoshop. Uh, and then you have your color space. So you can export whatever color space your lab needs. So if you're exporting with a lab that's printing sRGB, sRGB. If you're exporting to a lab that does Adobe, export as Adobe. Um, so we have sRGB color space because that's what, uh, let's say that's what our lab does. And then for quality, you don't have to keep it at 100. Same thing as like the 12 on Photoshop. Uh, you can set it at 92 here. It saves you a little bit of space, upload time and speed, uh, hard drive space, and um, you're never going to see the difference. So a lot of people have done tests with this, uh, and but 92 is kind of the default line. Some people even go less, but you don't want to push it too much. But 92 will save you a little bit of space and size. Um, and then you export. Uh, and then that's done. And then that file you can upload to your lab uh, of choice. So that is it. Your file is prepped. So we're going to do one more video, and that class is going to be on comparing your prints to your screen. A lot of times people get prints back, and they want to hold the print up next to their screen and see if it matches or not. We're going to talk about the science of that with light uh, and uh, see if there is, can you truly match a print to your screen or is there always going to be a subtle difference? So we're going to get into that on the next video and break that down. So, all right, that's it. We'll see you then.